Welcome back to another episode of In the Zone, the educational elk hunting series where we break down previous elk hunting experiences and call-ins from previous seasons with the hopes of sharing some of the tactics and strategies we used to find success. This particular hunt you can watch unfold in the premiere episode of Destination Elk V2, but I wanted to take a little bit here and break down our opening day hunt when Donnie actually filled his elk tag here in Idaho. It's August 30th, so you can imagine early season pre-rut type tactics. And what we knew we had to do was cover a lot of ground, hoping to find a bull that was even interested in bugling. And while we did cover a lot of ground, what we found was a bull already with cows and bugling his head off like it was the peak of the rut. We left the truck and had hiked around two miles up the mountain when we ended up spotting some cow elk on the hillside about 400 yards across from us. The thermals were coming uphill at this point, which meant we couldn't close the distance and get on the same side of the hill as the elk. We needed to try to pull the bull away from the cows and over to our side of the draw. Donnie moved ahead 60 yards or so and I stayed back to call. What we didn't realize at this point though was that there was a large rock cliff directly below where Donnie was setting up. The bull was with cows already and responding to our cow calls, so that's what I kept giving him. The herd bull had moved down the hillside and was now in the bottom of the draw. He stayed in the bottom for several minutes and was quite vocal, but he wasn't comfortable coming up that rocky face to our calls. As he retreated and went back up the hillside toward his cows, we decided to circle around and try to get above the elk to get the wind in our favor. As we were moving in to get ahead of the bull, he heard us breaking brush coming through the draw and came down the hillside to investigate. Fortunately, since the wind was moving up the hillside, he stopped short of coming all the way in and we avoided getting winded. Knowing the wind wasn't right, we froze and remained silent until the bull had moved back up the hillside and was out of sight. With the bull now out of sight and heading back toward his cows, we continued up the mountain, still aiming to get ahead of the elk to get the thermals in our favor. Well, 
We had an eventful, I say morning, but mid-morning. Our morning hunt didn't pan out. We heard a couple bugles, but we uh, drove to the end of the road down here and let out a bugle and nothing, but it looked good. So I convinced Donnie and John to just walk around one corner with me and see if we could get an answer. <laughs> I think we're about two and a half miles from the truck now. We got an answer though, so we got in on a pretty fired up bull, a nice six point, and we're going to uh, stay here and wait for the evening hunt and hope that he's still around. We've got a fired up bull on opening day, we can't leave him, so we backed off about 200 yards, got good wind, and we're just going to hang out here and I'm gonna say until the bull bugles, but until John gets back, yeah. and then <laughs> we'll go in after. After retreating three or 400 yards and hunkering down for nearly five hours, the evening thermal started to shift. So we got up and headed over the ridge to try to relocate the bull. We weren't sure where the bull had ended up bedding down for the day, but a quick response to our location bugle gave up his location. He had actually moved down the mountain to bed in the cool draw below, and with the thermals ready to switch and start pulling back down the mountain, we knew we had to act fast to get in on him and try to call him in. We had the bull pinpointed and were within 250 yards of him, but we had a couple of potential obstacles that we had to navigate. First, the wind was still coming up the hill and angling slightly to our left. We only had a small window of time to use these thermals before they switched and started going down the hill. If we dropped down any lower, the bull could easily swing up onto the adjacent ridge and catch our scent. Additionally, a couple large brush patches made it impossible to go straight across the hillside toward the bull. Our best chance was to climb back up and fast to take advantage of the current thermals and try to call the bull up the ridge to us before the wind switched. Again, considering how the bull had responded to cow calls that morning, I continued using only cow calls to get him to respond as we moved in closer and closer. Now that we were on the other side of the brush patches, we could use them to our advantage, knowing that the bull wouldn't be able to move across below us to get our wind if the thermals changed. I stayed up on the ridge to call as Donnie moved down alongside the brush patch to set up.
The bull was slowly but surely making his way up the ridge toward us, but with the shadows quickly stretching across the hillside, I knew time was working against us. I decided to escalate the calling and threw in an aggressive challenge bugle in the hopes the bull would speed up his approach. Fortunately, it worked. In addition to our aggressive calling tactic working, our decision to set up alongside the brush patch worked as well. The bull tried to circle below me, anticipating the changing thermals, but the thick brush forced him to turn back up onto the ridge that Donnie was set up on. Donnie had chosen the perfect setup, and when the bull turned to continue up the ridge, Donnie was ready. Anticipation is always high on opening day, but success on an early season pre-rut elk hunt can be hard earned. Fortunately, we found a bull that was fired up, and by adding some aggressive calling and using the terrain to our advantage, we were able to call that awesome herd bull right up the ridge and into Donnie's lap for a close shot and a very short recovery. The success rate for do-it-yourself public land elk hunters hovers around 10%. The reality of that statement is that nine out of 10 elk hunters each fall fail to fill their tag, or the average elk hunter only fills their elk tag once every 10 years. But average no longer applies to you. Crush the averages and sign up for the University of Elk Hunting online course today and become a consistently successful elk hunter.